Hi guys, I'm Amy, an up-and-coming artist and I'm 26 years old. My story begins in a small Colorado town. I want to start off by talking about my wonderful Aunt Maureen. I had the incredible privilege of having my Aunt Maureen live right next door in a massive Victorian style mansion. When my parents were at work, I would spend hours with her. She was a free-spirited artist and those moments with her were magical. Aunt Maureen taught me so many things from painting to embracing my creative side. Her home was like a treasure trove of art and culture filled with paintings, sculptures and books. As we both got older, Aunt Maureen and I became even closer. So when I was getting ready to tie the knot, I knew exactly who I wanted as my maid of honor. She taught me everything I know today, but the greatest gift she gave me was to make me discover my passion for art. Now Clay, my husband, is the kind of man who makes you believe in soulmates. He was not in the same college as me, but he used to drive down six hours every weekend just to see me. And it didn't take long for me to realize that he was the one. He is everything I ever wanted in a partner, caring, supportive, and endlessly patient. Our love story may sound like a fairy tale, but like any relationship, it comes with its share of complexities. And that is where my mother-in-law, Jane, enters the picture. Jane is a force to be reckoned with. In her professional life, she is a powerhouse, a successful lawyer. On the flip side, she is also a woman who is a real character at family gatherings and not always in a good way. And let us say she has a personal vendetta against me. One time she pulled off a miracle by somehow losing my dog at the park, sending me into full-on panic mode. Other times she managed to add some real dairy milk to my milkshake, even though she knew I was lactose intolerant. But the most shocking betrayal, she managed to put all my property under my husband's name. Yes, you read it right. It sounds crazy, but that is what happened. It all started with a very upsetting phone call from my mom. Hey mom, it's been a while since we caught up. How's everything on your end? Oh, Amy, it is so good to hear your voice. Well, there is something I need to talk to you about, and it is not the easiest news. Mom, you are starting to worry me. What's going on? It is about Aunt Maureen, sweetheart. She passed away recently. Aunt Maureen? Mom, please, this can't be true. I started crying. Yes, honey. As much as it pains me to say it, it is the truth. Oh, Mom, I can't believe it. When did this happen? It was just last night, Amy. Maureen had been battling an illness, a heart condition. She had not told a single soul about it. Typical Maureen. She never wanted to trouble anyone. Well, she is at peace now. We're planning your Aunt Maureen's funeral and... We'd really like you to be there. Of course, Mom. I would not miss it for anything. Aunt Maureen was so important to me and I want to pay my respects. That would mean a lot to her, sweetheart. The funeral will be held next weekend at the church she loved so much. Clay and I will be there. I told Clay about Aunt Maureen's passing and he immediately said he would be there for the funeral. But here is the twist. Jane, his mom, had planned to visit us that week because she took time off work and it coincided with the funeral. Clay suggested we take her along. Honestly, I was not too thrilled about it. Jane and I had our differences and I was not sure how she would act at such an emotional event. Still, I reluctantly agreed, hoping she would be at her best behavior. The day of the funeral came and Jane showed up dressed in black, just as we had asked her to. We all piled into the car for a two-hour drive to the funeral location. Inside, I was feeling a whole lot of sadness and a lot of hope that Jane would keep things calm. The church was filled with friends and family who had come to pay their respects to Aunt Maureen. 
During the funeral, I had to step up and deliver a eulogy for Aunt Maureen. It was a pretty emotional moment, to be honest. At the reception, while I was chatting with Jane and Clay, my mom walked up to me. It was the moment she told me something I was not prepared for. So, Amy, did Jane and Clay have a comfortable drive up here? Yeah, the drive was fine. That's good to know, Jane. Amy, uh, there's something I need to tell you. We found out about Aunt Maureen's will the other day, and she left everything to you. Everything? What do you mean, Mom? I mean, her two houses and $100,000 in her bank account. All of it goes to you, Amy. That's, that is a lot, Amy. Wow, I, I can't believe it. I knew she loved me, but this is, this is really a lot. Well, you were her only niece and we were her only family. That's quite the generous amount she's left behind. How about we take a drive to the other side of town so you can get a better look at the property? It is in the outskirts and she never used it. That way you can decide what you want to do with it after seeing it up close. You are already familiar with the house she lived in. Yeah, that's a great idea. And the other place is the house I grew up in. It is not something I'll easily forget. Amy turns to Clay and Jane. Clay, Jane, would you be willing to come along with me? Of course, dear. We have no objections at all. No problem, babe. Later that evening, we all got into the car to go and see the property. This place is huge, Amy. It has so much potential. Indeed, but it does seem like it has not been maintained for a while. That's true. It will need some work to get it back in shape. You know what, guys? I have made my decision. I'm going to renovate this place and put it on the market. Meanwhile, I will keep the other place. Aunt Maureen and I shared so many memories there and I want to keep that connection alive. That sounds like a great plan. We got back home really late that night and Jane decided to stay over. The following day, over a cup of coffee right before Jane was going to leave, she came up to me with an offer. Amy, I've been thinking since I'm a lawyer and I deal with legal paperwork all the time, I can help you with the legalities of your Aunt Maureen's properties. Oh, really, Jane? Well, it is the least I can do. I know this inheritance is relatively straightforward, but when it comes to dealing with multiple properties, it can get a bit complex. I'm familiar with all the ins and outs of this stuff. It would definitely make things easier. I would be happy to assist. I can ensure everything is in order, from transferring titles to handling any legal documentation that may be required. So... If I have your permission, forward all the documents to me and I will take care of stuff. You might already be going through a hard time losing your aunt. Let me help you. Thank you, Jane. That takes a weight off my shoulders. Jane had pulled some pretty silly tricks on me in the past, but I couldn't deny that she was a damn good lawyer. So after some thought, I decided to take her up on her offer to handle the paperwork. You know... Jane could be a bit, well, let's say, difficult to deal with at times. Like any mother-in-law, she had her moments, but I honestly did not think she could cause me any financial trouble. I mean, we were talking about legal stuff here, not meddling in my personal life, right? It was one of those situations where you weigh the benefits against the potential headaches. And let us face it, dealing with multiple properties and legalities can be a real headache. So I figured, why not let Jane put her legal expertise to good use? It might actually save me from a few migraines down the road. So in the span of just a couple of weeks while I was busy with my little art projects at home, Jane completely took over. She had me sign what felt like a million documents. She explained each one, making it all sound so straightforward. I trusted her. After all, she was a lawyer, and I thought she had my best interests at heart. Then came the day when I checked my bank account, and there it was. A total of $100,000, Aunt Maureen's generous gift. 
It was a life-changing amount and I could not help but feel a rush of gratitude. I had plans for that money, renovations on Aunt Maureen's old house, preserving her memory and maybe even some financial security for the future. With this sweet inheritance, I planned to open up my very own art gallery. It was going to be a tribute to her talent and the place where artists can shine. You know, they say you should always read the fine print before signing anything. Well, I wish I had taken that advice to heart. You see, when Jane had me sign all those documents, I just assumed they were routine legal stuff and I trusted her implicitly. I never bothered to read them carefully and that, my friends, turned out to be a big mistake. I was under the impression that I had become the rightful owner of Aunt Maureen's properties and I kept the paperwork tucked away, completely oblivious to the details within. It was a classic case of naivety mixed with misplaced trust and I could not help but blame myself for not being more vigilant. Fast forward a month and I found myself in a situation where I needed those very documents. I had decided to sell Aunt Maureen's abandoned property to a builder named Jonathan. He was interested and it seemed like a good opportunity to move forward with my plans. So one sunny afternoon I pulled out the paperwork from where I had stashed it and took it along to meet Jonathan. I thought it was just a formality. A quick exchange of papers and the deal would be sealed. Amy, something does not seem right here. What do you mean, Jonathan? These documents. They do not exactly convey the ownership of the property to you. My heart sank as I glanced at the papers. I had never paid much attention to the legal jargon before, but now it seemed like everything was written in a foreign language. What? But Jane, my lawyer, assured me that I was the owner. Well, Amy, it looks like you have had a misunderstanding with your lawyer. From what I'm seeing, this property clearly does not belong to you. How is this possible? Jane, she, she had promised. I understand, Amy, but it looks like you'll need to consult a new lawyer to sort this out. I can't proceed with the purchase without clear ownership. Wait. Did you say the property belongs to someone else? Yes, it's listed here as the property of a uh, Clay Carpenter. Clay Carpenter? That's my husband. Are you sure it says that? A hundred percent. My mind was racing as I hastily gathered my things and left the cafe with Jonathan's words echoing in my head. The shock of discovering that the property did not belong to me but to my own husband, Clay Carpenter. How had this happened? I needed answers and I needed them fast. I dialed Clay and asked Clay to come back home right away. Clay, did you know that you were the owner of the property? I mean Aunt Maureen's property? Yeah, I did. My mom told me there was some trouble putting it under your name so she made me sign a couple of things. I thought you were aware of this. Clay, I hate to jump to conclusions, but I think your mom lied to both of us. What do you mean, Amy? Clay, your mom told me she was making me the owner of the house, and she told you a whole different story. What? That can't be right. I had no idea about this. Clay, something isn't adding up here. I trusted your mom, and I can't believe she'd deceive us like this. This is messed up, Amy. I need to talk to my mom about this. Clay and I looked at each other totally puzzled. So without wasting any more time, we hopped in the car and zoomed over to her place ready to get to the bottom of this crazy mess. Jane, we need to talk. We found out about the property and there is something you need to explain. What are you talking about, dear? Cut the act, Mom. We know you lied to both of us. You told me you were making me the owner of the house and you told Clay that you were making him the owner of the house and told him I was okay with it. What is the truth here, Jane? Ah, you caught me there. Well, Amy, I did what I thought was best for my son. He deserves all of it. You see, Amy, I've never quite trusted you. You've always been a stay-at-home wife, never really contributing financially to this family. Painting those silly little art pieces doesn't really help you to run the house, does it? 
In my eyes, my son deserves all that property more than you do. I cannot put his future in your hands. I just can't trust you to handle it properly. Frankly, you have always been more of a burden than anything else, living off my son's hard work. Mom, that is enough. Amy's my wife and I will not let you insult her like this. She has supported me in every way she could and that is more than anything. I'm a lawyer, Clay. At 55, I'm still taking on challenging projects and hustling in life. Look at Amy. She's nothing but a useless housewife, painting her life away like a 20-year-old. Mom, being a homemaker is as much of a struggle as being a lawyer is. I have had enough of your lies, Jane. Just wait and watch. I'm going to sue you. Sue me? With the knowledge and brain you have, I do not think you stand a chance. Little did Jane know that my dad was a judge. I mean, talk about a twist she did not see coming, right? I had grown up in a family where justice and fairness were like our family mottos. So, of course, I was ready to fight for what was rightfully mine. Now, let's get one thing straight. Being a housewife is no excuse for anyone to steal your inheritance and pull all this shady stuff. Housewives, just like any other role, play a massive part in making a home and their contributions are absolutely priceless. So it was beyond unjust for Jane to underestimate me based on my chosen role. So there I was hatching a plan with Clay. He was all in and he knew his mom's tactics like the back of his hand. We were not going down without a fight. We decided to get our own lawyer. With legal expertise on our side, we went full steam ahead, filing a lawsuit against Jane. Our case went to court, and let me tell you, that day is etched into my memory forever. It was one of those moments when you feel like your life is on the line and everything hangs in the balance. I had an honest conversation with my dad about the whole situation and he reassured me that justice would prevail. Having a judge as a father was a real advantage in this ordeal. Jane, on the other hand, looked confident as ever. She probably thought her lawyer skills would save the day, but little did she know that justice does not bend to manipulation. Amy, you have really outdone yourself this time, suing your own family. I guess you'll learn a lesson or two about the real world. Jane, this is not about lessons, it's about justice. Aunt Maureen's properties were meant for me, just me. I would have shared it with Clay and even you, but you did not even give me a chance. I'm a skilled lawyer, Amy. I know how to navigate these waters. You were just a housewife. Once this is over, you'll realize that you should have never gone against me. And just as she was talking crap about me, my dad entered the room. What? What is he doing here? Is he the judge? Yeah, Jane, that's my dad. He's the judge presiding over this case. You should have known. Why didn't you tell me earlier? This changes everything. I didn't want you to feel intimidated. I didn't sign up for this. I thought I could win this without any issues. The courtroom showdown ended with Jane getting a two-month timeout in jail for her tricky antics. Those were the most tension-free months we had in a long time. With a new lawyer by my side, I managed to secure ownership of Aunt Maureen's properties. We decided to sell one of the houses to a builder, knowing it was the smart move. It felt like a huge weight lifted off our shoulders. No more legal battles, no more deceit to worry about. Life moved forward and we breathed easier. Just a day ago, Jane walked out of jail. And the first thing she did was march up to me. She had to fork over a cool $20,000 as part of the fine from the lawsuit I won. Amy, I, I wanted to apologize for everything I did. I shouldn't have called you a boring housewife and all those terrible things. I was wrong. Well, Jane, it is about time you realized it. But you see, those words, they don't come off easily. Amy, you do not understand. I lost my lawyer's license. And now... I'm jobless. I have no savings left. And the fine you imposed on me? Oh, Jane, isn't it ironic? The mastermind lawyer now facing consequences herself. As for that fine, well, you just have to find a way to pay it, won't you? 
Please, Amy, I'm begging you. Can't you let me get away with the fine? I have nothing left. Sorry, Jane. No shortcuts to redemption here knocking at my door. Jane, well, she's got her own set of issues now. She's no longer a lawyer, and her son, Clay, isn't exactly rushing to her side. Consequences have a funny way of coming back to bite you, and it seems like they've caught up with her. She eventually paid us the money which we honestly didn't need, and now we have completely shut her out of our lives. I hope she learned a major lesson. Respect every hustle out there and treat everyone right. Don't let your ego get too inflated. The higher you soar, the nastier the fall when you come crashing down. I'm now the proud owner of some prime property and a nice chunk of cash. It's like a world of opportunities just busted open for me. I've got this killer plan to open up a gallery for myself, and the first art show is going to be showcasing all of Aunt Maureen's incredible art. Her creative genius deserves to be seen by the world, and I'm going to make it happen with that sweet inheritance money. Art lovers, get ready to be wowed. <laughs>